Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tim Bussey, and I have the honor and privilege of serving as the mayor of the city of Bloomington. And on behalf of the city and our residents and our business community, I wanted to welcome everybody here to this afternoon's events. Especially want to welcome Congressman Dean Phillips, who has been a great friend and an advocate for us, the cities here in the 3rd Congressional District. Mm -hmm. Congressman, you're always welcome here, and always glad to have you here in your favorite city in the 3rd Congressional District. Thank you so very much. Also, welcome to Commissioner Harrington. Uh, thank you for being here with us, and thank you for your work. And if you could pass the thanks on to Governor Walls as well for his ongoing commitment to public safety in the state of Minnesota. We greatly appreciate it. And uh, to all of our law enforcement uh, personnel and advocates, thank you for being here with us today. Uh, thank you for the work you do to keep our community safe. Really greatly appreciate it. Uh, as an elected official and a policymaker, I want to voice my absolute full support for the Pathways to Policing Act, and I want to commend Congressman Phillips for bringing the proposal forward. It's a creative and a meaningful idea to address a problem that is uh, acute, not only in cities and counties in Minnesota, but across the country. And I'm proud of the fact that this idea had its origins at the municipal level. It was test-driven and refined and proven locally. And a couple of communities that are represented here today. You'll hear about that more in just a moment here. Uh, I'm also proud that this isn't the first good idea born locally that has become then state or even national level policy. Uh, the best example of this is the indoor smoking ban. And one of Minnesota's first local ordinances banning smoking in bars and restaurants was passed right here in this chambers. Uh, other examples include uh, recycling at the local level. Tobacco 21 ordinances, broadband ordinances. There are a number of good examples. Uh, and it's my hope that this Pathways to Policing proposal will follow the same and even a higher path to success. The Minnesota city officials that I know and I work with agree that success at the city level, policy success is not a zero sum game. All cities can benefit from good policy. All counties, all municipalities can benefit from good policy and Minnesota cities work together and have been doing so for generations. It's great to see uh, today city, county, state, and federal officials together to endorse this proposal that uh, will, be, will create an innovative pipeline for departments who frankly need more people as police officers uh, serving our, our public safety needs in the, in, the, in the state of Minnesota. So once again, thank you all for joining us. And I would like to uh, welcome now, it is my honor to welcome the representative from Minnesota's 3rd Congressional District, Congressman Dean Phillips. Thank you. Very welcome. Thank you, Mayor Bussey, and uh, greetings, everybody. Thank you for being with us. Uh, I'm Dean Phillips, and I have the honor and privilege of representing Minnesota's 3rd District in the United States House of Representatives. I want to thank Mayor Bussey uh, for the introduction and for allowing us uh, use of City Hall today. Uh, also, the city of Bloomington, under the leadership of former chief Jeff Potts, who is with us today uh, in his new role, uh, has been a leader in finding ways to attract new talent to serve in law enforcement and served as the inspiration to me as I was putting together the piece of legislation that we are here to talk about today. I also want to welcome and thank our wonderful and esteemed guests behind me, including those we're going to hear from shortly, including Minnesota Department of Public Safety Commissioner John Harrington, Bloomington Police Chief Booker Hodges, St. Louis Park Police Chief Mike Harsey, uh, Pat Chelmo, representing Minnesota, the Minnesota Fraternal Order of Police, and Major Dewana Witt of the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office. Uh, public safety is my highest priority, and representation begins with listening. And that's exactly why we're here today. Uh, shortly after I was first elected, I began regularly convening police chiefs and fire chiefs all around the 3rd District to simply listen to the challenges they're facing firsthand, uh, their needs, and the ways in which we could work together to make our community safer for all of our residents. And of course, none of us could have known then, when I first entered Congress, what the next three years would bring to both our state and our country and the world, and the impact that it would have on the work of first responders in particular here and around the country. Last year, as a token uh, of my gratitude uh, for all of their service during these particularly difficult times, uh, I flew United States flags above the U.S. Capitol and personally delivered them to every single police and fire and sheriff's department in the 3rd District. It was 47 stops in all, each of them memorable. I've also had the distinct uh, honor of joining uh, rank and file members in roll calls and ride-alongs, uh, giving me the opportunity firsthand uh, to see both the challenges they face, but equally so the grace and the compassion with which they serve 
our communities. And each of these conversations, every single one of them, whether with chiefs or other law enforcement leaders or rank and file officers, one theme, one common theme was pervasive. Law enforcement agencies in the third district and all around the country are having a terribly difficult time recruiting quality applicants and hiring them and retaining them uh, for their careers. The message was unbelievably clear. The pipeline of qualified candidates who want, want to be law enforcement officers has simply dried up over the past few years. And now we have understaffed agencies continuing to be stretched thin, and it's becoming more and more difficult to respond to recent surges in criminal activity and to keep our community safe. Throughout these conversations, two solutions were mentioned repeatedly. The first was that we need more programs like the Pathways to Policing program, like the one in Minnesota, which helps recruit candidates that might otherwise uh, be in other careers. The second was that we need to get the message out to more young people in particular that service in law enforcement capacity is an important form of public service and a way to give back to our communities. So after wor uh, months of working with law enforcement partners, many of them in the room with me today, in both the third district and around the country, uh, I'm proud, very proud to announce that just two weeks ago during National Police Week, I introduced legislation in Congress to implement these very recommendations. Uh, my bill is named the Pathways to Policing Act after Minnesota's award-winning program. I'm proud to say that we have 10 original co-sponsors, most importantly, five Democrats and five Republicans working together to invest in public safety. The program would simply invest in new and diverse generation of law enforcement professionals in three key ways. First, would provide funding to states and local governments and law enforcement agencies to create and operate programs like Minnesota's Pathways to Policing program. The programs provide financial support to law enforcement candidates while they attend any necessary education and training programs. Uh, this will be particularly helpful, of course, in recruiting candidates who have started other careers uh, but want to make the switch into law enforcement. Secondly, my bill will provide funding to states and local governments and law enforcement agencies to run marketing and recruitment campaigns to encourage candidates to seek careers in law enforcement. This is the kind of advertising that could be pathways to policing programs or any other efforts you know, to hire more officers. And third, the bill would provide funding to the Department of Justice to operate a nationwide marketing and recruitment campaign, uh, an idea that uh, was modeled after the successful recruitment campaigns that the US military has undertaken for many, many years. Importantly, the funding provided through the bill will be prioritized towards efforts that recruit candidates who are members of the communities traditionally underrepresented in the field of law enforcement, who have non-traditional educational backgrounds or career backgrounds, or who reside in or are willing to relocate to communities that they will serve, connecting members of communities to serving their communities. The primary function of government is to keep people safe, and I say everybody safe. No matter your race, no matter your income, no matter your geography. We will not achieve this, however, if we continue to under-support and understaff our law enforcement agencies. We must redouble our efforts to attract the best and the brightest to pursue law enforcement and to serve the communities in which they live. Minnesota has shown the country exactly how to do it. Let's invest in a new generation of policing so that we can achieve public safety for all. I want to thank again everybody behind the Pathways to Policing program for inspiring this very effort and the many law enforcement leaders, uh, both here in our community and the state and around the country, whose advice and counsel was instrumental in coming up with this legislation. I'm honored, deeply honored, and humbled to work alongside so many people who are willing to work collaboratively to find solutions that will make our communities safer for all. And I look forward to hearing more from you about the importance of this effort. So with that, I would now like to introduce our very first speaker, who is John Harrington, the Commissioner of Minnesota's Department of Public Safety. Commissioner. Good afternoon. My name is John Harrington. I'm the Commissioner of the Minnesota Department of Public Safety. I'm happy to be here, and I'm honored to be here with this very distinguished group. Uh, and I'm always happy to see Congressman Phillips. Uh, he has been instrumental in so many causes that I am passionate about, whether it is uh, movements against hate crimes, movements to support women who are battered and trying to make sure that we're doing the right thing. And, and this is just another example of him being on the right side of the issues that are confronting Minnesotans every day and in so many ways. Now, I unfortunately do not come from the city of Bloomington, unlike so many people here do. Uh, 
<laughs> I'm a St. Paul kid uh, uh, by, by training. And, and in St. Paul, we talk about the gold standard for policing being a department that is both responsive to and reflective of the people we serve. And the Pathways Policing approach does both of those things. It increases the number of individuals who are there to be responsive to the needs of the public. And I can tell you that literally Governor Walls, Lieutenant Flanagan and I have traveled across the state over this last year, year and a half, and we've been listening to communities, whether it is uh, in Duluth with, with the mayor and Chief Tuscan down in Rochester with Chief Franklin in New Ulm, on the north side of Minneapolis, on the east side of St. Paul, and, and here in the Twin Cities, we've been listening to communities. And, and the theme that we heard repeatedly from mayors, chiefs of police, fire chiefs, and EMS was that they were in shortfall, that they did not have enough people to answer the calls that were coming in, much less the surge in crime and the surge in need that we're seeing from the community, whether it is mental health calls, calls around carjacking, what we've all seen is this increased volume of need. And what we have not seen is the resources necessary to respond to that need. So we are delighted to be supportive of this bill. Uh, Pathways Policing is a model that we really do believe works. It is a model that will increase the numbers. And, and part of what I think it's indicative of your five and five that have signed on as sponsors. It's indicative of the support that we've seen for this kind of idea, as we talked about in the last legislative session even, where there was support for the idea of recruiting, the idea of how do we recruit and retain more offices. This is a great place to start to get us into the front end of starting to build the resources, to build the pathway, to build the, the ramp on to a life of public safety and public service. And I am just absolutely so excited to see this move forward and happy to be supportive uh, in any way we can. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Now it's my honor to introduce uh, former Bloomington Police Chief uh, Jeff Potts, who now serves as the Executive Director of the Minnesota Chiefs of Police Association and was one of the architects of Minnesota's Pathways to Policing program. And I also, before you come up, Jeff, I want to announce that the Major Cities Chiefs Association has endorsed this bill today as well. So we're pleased by that. Jeff Potts. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, as uh, the Congressman said, my name is Jeff Potts. I'm the Executive Director of the Minnesota Chiefs of Police Association. Uh, I've been with the Chiefs Association for the past 15 months, and prior to that, I served 29 years here at the Bloomington Police Department, the last 12 as a police chief. I want to thank Congressman Phillips and his staff uh, for their work on this very important piece of legislation. Uh, you see very, a very similar program, a very similar pathway to policing program started here in Bloomington in 2016. Uh, when we, in partnership and collaboration with the St. Louis Park Police Department, uh, developed a program very similar to this, and Chief Harsey from St. Louis Park, who I worked with closely in 2016, will make some remarks later. But at that time, uh, both of our departments were finding it very difficult uh, to create or to recruit police officer candidates that would allow us to become more reflective of the communities that we serve. In 2016, well, it's quite a while ago, but in 2016, traditional law enforcement candidate pools were deep uh, with candidates, but very shallow with candidates, with diverse candidates. Uh, the Pathway to Policing program helped to change that. Uh, the Pathway to Policing program uh, changed the traditional hiring process uh, to allow for people to come into law enforcement with a two or four year degree in any discipline. And with active uh, recruitment, uh, we could recruit folks from different backgrounds that allowed us to broaden the candidate pools and which made a much deeper and more diverse pool of candidates. Considering all that has changed in law enforcement since 2016, I think this legislation will help departments do the very same thing that we did here in Bloomington and in St. Louis Park and a few other departments across the state of Minnesota and frankly across the country. As we continue to reevaluate how law enforcement serves, services are delivered, it remains critically important that we hire the right people to do this work. Research has shown that it is much easier for police departments to build trust and deeper relationships in their community when the department is more reflective of the community they serve. Let me say that again. Research has shown us that it's much easier for police departments to build deep trust and deeper relationship in the community when the department is more reflective of the community that they serve. 
Today, communities across Minnesota and the entire country struggle to hire and retain police officers. We just heard uh, the commissioner, we heard uh, Congressman Phillips talk about that. This legislation helps agencies recruit and retain the right people to do the vitally important work of keeping their communities safe. And I'm grateful to Congressman Phillips and his staff for the focused effort and attention to address this growing crisis. On, in closing, on behalf of the Minnesota Police Chiefs Association, and, the, and our members include more than 300 police chiefs and 150 command staff members across the state, uh, we enthusiastically support this piece of much needed legislation. Thanks for uh, allowing me to be here with you guys today. Brooker Hodges, the Chief of Police here in Bloomington. Dr. Hodges. Thanks, Congressman. Um, I'll just say this. Normally, when a politician comes forward with a good idea during an election year, uh, typically <laughs> we don't pay attention to it. But in this case, um, I will say that Congressman Phillips is authentic here. And uh, what he's doing, I really believe, has the potential to change our profession. So pay attention uh, to what, what he's talking about. So pathways to policing here, again, I go back to Minnesota. Unfortunately, we've had uh, some of the most notorious instances in law enforcement are reflective out of this state, and hopefully this will be one of the best instances that come out of Minnesota for a program that people see that is actually reflective of the law enforcement quality that we have here in Minnesota as opposed to some of the national attention that we've gotten here. This program uh, has the potential to be a game changer in terms of how we recruit and retain law enforcement workforces. Right now, if you look, the Department of Justice did a demographic study back uh, in 2013 where it showed the amount of officers re in relative, uh, in respect to uh, the people of color population. So from 1990 to 2013, we started to see as police departments, uh, numbers were less reflective of the communities they served. And at some point, this demographic um, contention is going to come to ahead. And that's where we're at right now. If you look at a lot of the shortages in law enforcement agencies, you can almost directly correlate that with the demographic shift in this country. So what this program allows us to do is for people like me, when we get to tell our families to go join law enforcement, it gives us the opportunity to have a program that uh, they can do and that they can use to join this profession. And as a police chief, I can tell you, um, and everybody that's participated in this program is probably going to have the same story for you. This program allows us in many respects to have complete um, hiring processes where the traditional applicant pool tends to be lacking. We're normally able to make up the difference with uh, uh, pathways to policing candidates. So with that, again, thank you, Congressman Phillips. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chief. And now it's an honor to uh, Chief of Police in St. Louis Park. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, Mike Harsey and the police. Uh, uh, Police Chief in St. Louis Park. Thank you, Congressman Phillips, for uh, having us here today and, and the work that you're doing to sponsor this important legislation and your support of public safety uh, across the board. Uh, many have spoke about uh, the Pathways to Policing program, but I just want to uh, echo some of their comments that uh, law enforcement agencies in Minnesota and across the nation are, are facing challenging times in staffing their agencies. Candidate pools have decreased uh, with qualified candidates, and the competition for those qualified candidates among agencies has uh, really increased. Uh, developing, recruiting, and hiring qualified police candidates has become extremely challenging in our profession. Um, in response to some of those things we were seeing in 2016, the uh, Bloomington Police Department and the St. Louis Park Police Department worked together to develop what we thought at the time very innovative police hiring program called Pathways to Policing. Uh, the program was designed to, uh, as Chief Potts had said, the program was designed to address a reduction in the number of police officer applicants in our traditional hiring processes and to assist with uh, uh, recruitment of people of color and non-traditional candidates to the uh, profession. Uh, this program was developed to remove barriers for candidates who had at least a two or a four year uh, uh, degree and were interested in pursuing a career in law enforcement but may not have had the means to either pay for the uh, uh, required training or the ability to leave their current job to uh, go into a full-time training program in order to uh, be licensed as police officers here in Minnesota. Um, over the last six uh, years we've conducted five of these hiring processes which included 12 different agencies, uh, most in the metro, but a few uh, outstate a little bit. 
Those included the Airport Police Department, Bloomington, Columbia Heights, Egan's, Hastings, Maplewood, Invergrove Heights, Plymouth, Red Wing, uh, St. Louis Park, the University of Minnesota, and the Wake Park Police Departments. We've had great success with this. Some uh, mixed results in uh, hiring and retaining candidates, but the results clearly show that a joint recruiting effort from multiple agencies resulted in a much higher number of applicants than a traditional process for any one agency. Additionally, statistics have shown that the pathways to policing applicant pools are much more racially diverse than our normal processes had been. Uh, the Pathways to Policing Act would assist our program by elevating our marketing and recruitment campaigns for this program and provide additional funding that would allow additional agencies in Minnesota to participate in the program. So thank you for your sponsoring the legislation. Thank you, Chief, very much. And now, second vice president and legislative director for the Minnesota Fraternal Order of Police. And as I do so, also to note that the MPPOA now has endorsed the bill, Minnesota Peace and Police Officers Association. And I know Brian Peters would have wanted to be here but couldn't join us today. But Pat, welcome. Good afternoon, and uh, thank you, Congressman Phillips, for your leadership and support. Uh, my name is Patrick Chelmo. Uh, I'm with you all today on behalf of the Minnesota Fraternal Order of Police. Uh, as leaders in public safety, we have a vested interest in our communities, not based on our profession, but based on our position, side by side with all of you. One of the ways that the Fraternal Order of Police works for our communities is to partner with elected leaders like Congressman Phillips and the work of legislative advocacy. Um, I would absolutely be remiss if I did not thank the Congressman for his partnership and uh, efforts to seek input from stakeholders in this Pathways to Policing legislation. Of all the challenges facing law enforcement and public safety today, recruitment and, uh, and hiring may be the most critical. As such, the Congressman's vision of building the Pathways to Policing program at the national level couldn't be more meaningful than it is today. Public safety is a complex recipe. Uh, it's built on two very basic yet very important ideas, public service and public trust. As law enforcement and community leaders, we absolutely must not lose sight of this. These ideas must be at the forefront of our recruiting and hiring. Success in the public safety arena is built on partnerships and trust with the communities we serve, and it begins by including folks from our communities among us who have a heart for service. After 23 years in this profession, I believe people who want to serve walk among us. Some wear a uniform and some do not yet. They have amazing stories and connections and there's absolutely a place for them in law enforcement. The Pathways to Policing legislation will help local law enforcement identify and support those who want to serve their communities. By opening doors of opportunities uh, to those who may not feel like attending college to become a cop is within reach, we can empower those with a heart for public service to take that step. The Pathways to Policing program affords communities and law enforcement uh, the opportunity to capitalize on the wisdom and breadth of experience found within their communities. These communities deserve the best from law enforcement and that must include non-traditional recruits. The perspective gained through life experience is an incredibly valuable tool to our cops and daily it leads to better outcomes. The Pathways to Policing program makes these outcomes possible. I mentioned public safety as a recipe of public service and public trust. This trust is earned and nurtured every day, on every call, on every street. It's built with interactions and relationships, and only by building and maintaining these relationships will we grow this trust. By including people from communities we serve, we can find and build this trust more easily. The Pathways to Policing program has worked for law enforcement in Minnesota, and it's time to take it to the national stage. So thank you again, Congressman Phillips, for your steadfast support and vision of safer communities for all. Thank you, Patrick. And now I welcome. Thank you, Congressman. First off, I want to also thank you for taking leadership on this. This is a very important role. As we talk about recruitment and retention in law enforcement, we also must recognize that the branches of law enforcement, such as corrections and detention deputies, which is also at a critical point when it comes to staffing levels. I would be remiss without saying that I also know that the Minnesota Sheriff's Association is also behind your bill. So 
Thank you. As of right now, um, as the major that oversees courts and jail and talking with the other Metro County uh, Sheriff's offices, we have the unique responsibility of not only hiring licensed peace officers, but also detention and correctional deputies, which is used interchangeably depending on which sheriff's office you work for. I started my career as a detention deputy, had no idea that I would be a licensed deputy. Didn't think that was in, in my um, scope of my life, but it was. So when I think about retention in recruiting, the non-traditional forms such as pathways, Sometimes people don't know what they're looking for, so what can we do to make this profession, as well as the branches of this profession, such as fire, EMS, detention, corrections, how do we make it all look more um, attractive to people? Because sometimes people just don't know. These are all very noble professions. And as someone who's been in this, um, this line of work for 22 years and using traditional forms, such as the Explorers Program, which we know Minnesota led on a national level in many ways when it came to teaching law enforcement and criminal justice. As someone who teaches in the criminal justice system, talking to students who absolutely have no idea if it's corrections, if it's licensed peace officers, is it, is it probation, what is it that they wanna do? I think that this Pathways program will open the doors for us to think outside the box more and find the people who don't know quite what it is that they want to do with their lives to know the good parts of this profession and the good people in this profession and how it is about helping people from everywhere. So with that, I wanna thank you. And I know the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office is on board with this and we look forward to making this program grow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, th there is no more noble calling than serving the public. And there is no more ex uh, knowing that there's a chance that their life could be changed forever in the course of the day, and full well knowing that the people that they serve are likely to have their lives changed forever in some way, shape, or form every single day in state houses around the country. Uh, public service isn't easy. Developing legislation isn't easy. But listening is easy. Listening is easy, and we all have to do a little bit more of it. Uh, and this entire uh, legislative package is the outcome of simply listening. Run from it, we ran to it, uh, we listened, We've convened 82 public safety related meetings, convenings, gatherings, ride-alongs in just my first three years of service. And when I hear the same thing time and time again, uh, I know we can take action. Uh, and this may not sound like a big deal, but it actually is because I think it's fair to say that this is one of the first times that a legislative bill uh, of this importance uh, was not developed uh, by Washington lawmakers. It was developed in participation uh, with those who had the need the people right behind me. And I just hope that this is the beginning uh, of a new way uh, of working together by listening and then by doing, and most importantly, by serving our community. So uh, with that, uh, thank you all to, uh, to those uh, who are on the stage with me today that played a role in this. And uh, now I will turn it over to uh, any of the journalists in the room if you have any questions for any of us. The agencies that are now remarkably and dangerously deficient, I think it's fair to say, in their, in their minimum staffing levels. Uh, of course, we all know about the Minneapolis Police Department, but it is not unique to Minneapolis. This is St. Paul. It's every major metro area. It's Bloomington. Every single police chief I speak with says the same thing. We used to have tens or hundreds of applicants when we had positions open, and that has dried up in some cases by 90%, which also means the quality and caliber uh, of applicant has also decreased. And this is about reintroducing not just the need, but the esteem, which, by the way, we all play a role in, the esteem uh, of celebrating, thanking, and appreciating uh, those who serve us every day. Um, it's important that we note that uh, as well. Any other, any other questions? Is there an oh. age restriction? I mean, 50, 55-year-old guy wants to become a police officer. Is that, is that possible? <laughs> oh, do we, might we have an applicant? <laughs> uh, gentlemen, uh, I'll let the professionals take that. No, there is no there is no age restriction uh, to be licensed as a post uh, as a police officer in the state of Minnesota. Though we we have a, a minimum requirement, but there is no maximum age requirement. Yeah. 